Hello everyone. Welcome all of you in all live classes from Jani Ketan. Today, the lesson which I have taken is from the book Moments. And this is chapter 2, The Adventures of Toto, written by Ruskin Bond. First, something about the author, writer. Ruskin Bond is an Indian English writer which who belongs to Britain. He had a British descent. He had written many books for children especially and he had been conferred with lots of awards also. I have mentioned a few over here for you. He had been awarded with Bharat Ratan, Padamshri Award, Padma Vibhushan Award. He has also received Jan Peet Award and many more. Now, in this chapter, The Adventures of Toto, there are four major characters. Apart from so many other also, and the main and or major characters in the story are Toto, the baby monkey, grandfather, grandmother, and the grandson, who is the narrator of the story also. The grandson is the narrator of the story. Now, to start with the story, it happens so that this grandfather is also a very major character of the story, apart from the narrator who is the grandson and the Toto is the chief character. Grandfather was a, an animal lover. He had a private zoo in his house. He loved animals very much. And one day, what he found, he found a little baby monkey in a very pitiable condition with red face and very thin he was looking, tied with, with a feeding trough in front of the house of a tonga driver. He was looking very pale and weak. And as the grandfather loved animals very much, he had kept so many of them in his private zoo also in his home also, he was, his heart was filled with pity and sympathy for that small or baby monkey. Out of love for that baby monkey, he bought it from that Tonga driver by paying rupees five. And then he brought it home. When he brought it home, he kept it secretly in his bedroom in a closet, secretly. Why? Why he maintained that secrecy? Out of the fear of the grandmother. Because grandmother did not like the presence of the animals in her house. She used to make a fuss. She did not like whenever the grandfather used to bring any animal to add in his private zoo, she used to be annoyed. So the grandfather just waited for the good mood of the grandmother to be told her that he has brought a new animal to add to his private zoo. So he secretly kept it in his bedroom in the closet. The Toto and he just gave it a name Toto. So Toto was a very sweet, red-faced, hmm, small baby uh, monkey. Hmm. He had white teeth and the teeth were so sharp that sometimes it could uh, frighten the Anglican ladies. It has been mentioned in the chapter. Hmm. But, and he had a long, beautiful tail also. And according to the grandfather, that added good looks 
to Toto. Her, his long, beautiful tail. Hmm. And Toto also used, apart from his two hands, Toto also used his that long, beautiful tail as his third hand to pick up things, to snatch things from others, hmm. and doing all sorts of mischief. So when he was in the bedroom, in a closet, grandfather was really thinking for the lifetime, that right opportunity to introduce that monkey to the other pet animals of the zoo as well as to the grandmother, the mistress of the house, the lady of the house. But after a few hours, when grandfather went, hmm, along with her grandson, his grandson, who is the narrator of the story, inside the, that room, what he found? Oh my goodness, there was a lot of destruction in the house, in that room especially. What he had done, he had that monkey, small monkey Toto, he had just scratched all the wallpapers, all the, even that much that the cement and the bricks could be seen in, in the walls of the room. He had torn the blazer of the grandson which was hanging with a peg into pieces and it was in a, just a shabby condition. He had torn all and just destroyed the whole room. Then grandfather became very much worried. Where to keep that baby monkey Toto for some time as secret from the grandmother. Then he thought and he took him to the servants' quarters where his other pet animals were already staying. And they were staying very peacefully, sociably. Hmm. And the other animals, those who were there were a pair of rabbit, there was a tortoise, there was a goat, hmm. and few more animals were there. They were living very happily and peacefully. So the grandfather thought that among those animals, Toto will also, would also be uh, become very friendly and he would also live with them, along with them, peacefully and happily. But as soon as Toto reached there, was kept there, he started teasing and annoying the other animals. He made all sorts of mischiefs and naughtiness over there that it was not possible for grandfather to leave Toto, that monkey, along with his other pet animals there for long. Now again, that was a matter of great worry for the grandfather. So what he thought, the next day he had to go from Dehradun to Saharanpur to collect his pension. What he thought was still a, 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 a secret from, if he has not disclosed the presence of Toto in the house, a new animal in the house to grandmother, and he had to leave the house, he had to go out of station, but what he could do, he thought. And then he decided to take Toto along with him to Sahara. And for that, he managed a big black canvas bag, he put so that bag made it ready, made it comfortable for Toto. He kept Toto inside that bag. He tied it very carefully, very tightly. And he took along uh, with him Toto to Saharan Pool. Hmm. And it was not in the knowledge of the grandson, the narrator. He was not doing anything about uh, Toto going along with his grandfather to Saharan Pool. It is Saharanpur, but when he reached at the station, the, the, the time was for the ticket collector to check the tickets and all. Hmm. So when he went in front of the ticket collector, so he just kept the bag, that big bag, canvas bag, on the floor, and then what happened? The Toto, Toto, who was inside the bag, hmm, it was just uh, shaking its body, doing some kind of movement inside the bag, and the bag started rolling. You know, it was shaking, and a big crowd gathered over there. People started staring what was actually inside the bag, and they were very curious to know. And this and uh, that uh, activity of Toto drew the attention of the ticket collector also. Then he started questioning. He made queries to grandfather what was there inside. Hmm. And 
remember that time, the, the uh, canvas bag, due to the harsh movement and all, it has its mouth has little bit open, and Toto had just started peeking out of the bag. And then the ticket collector saw that some animal was there in the that bag, canvas bag. And then he said that for that animal you are carrying, he asked the grandfather, for that you have to pay the fare. Hmm. Why? Because he took it, Toto, the monkey, as a dog inside the bag. And he said that that is the rule of the railways that whosoever carries a bag along with him or her, he or she has to pay the fare. So he permitted the grandfather to take it as, uh, as he had brought it along with him. He has used the means of transport, the railways, so he had to pay the fare for that. Grandfather, very quietly, without making any sort of fuss or any sort of uh, uh, just argumentation, what he did, he agreed to pay the uh, ticket collector rupees two as fair, and he paid it. Hmm. And then the next uh, uh, event, which is there in the story, tells us that after some time, the grandmother slowly, slowly came to know about the presence of Toto in the house. It was obvious she had to come to know. Because she was the lady of the house who used to take care of all the pet animals of the grandfather's private zoo. She used to take care of them, you know, she used to feed them, she used to give them warm water, she used to uh, take care of their living and all. So she came to know and what she could do. It was the hobby of the grandfather. So slowly, slowly, she accepted the presence of Toto also in the house. But Toto was really a very naughty and mischievous animal. All the time he used to, to do lots of destructions, he used to create, he used to break things, he used to just uh, uh, pounce on the arms of the families, on the members of the families, tease them, tear their clothes and all, and that continued for a long time. Grandmother was also a very kind-hearted and loving lady. And she started taking care of Toto in the same manner as she used to take care of the other animals in the house. She used to give him warm water in the winter days to take part. And Toto was an intelligent, according to the uh, narrator of the story as well as the author of the story, Toto also was an intelligent animal and before taking a bath he used to check the temperature of the of the water hmm, by putting his hand in the water first and when he used to be uh, he used to confirm that uh, the water was quite warm for him to take bath then only he used to get inside the big bowl of water and he used to he used to take a bath and after taking bath he used to run to the kitchen we had the fire. For what? For to wet, to dry himself as soon as possible. That intelligent he was. Huh? And apart from this, he was really mischievous also. Slowly, slowly the days passed and his mischief increased. Hmm, it progressed, it increased. And then he used to make a lots of destruction. Sometimes he used to tear the curtains, sometimes he used to break the, the crockery and all. And Grandfather's family was not uh, that much affluent. And it was very uh, difficult for them to afford that much of destruction in the house. So grandfather was really upset. He became upset with uh, Toto. And but what is to be done? He loved Toto very much. So one day it happened so in the story that the whole family had gathered to take their, to have their daytime meal, lunch. The table was laid already, all the things, the crockery was set, the plates and glasses, the spoon, and the dishes were also there. And a big bowl of pulao was kept in the middle of the table. Family members were yet to arrive to sit and take their lunch. And by 
that time, Toto came, came to know about or he could have smelled something delicious. He came and he jumped, pounced, does it mean? Pounced and he sat in the middle of the table. And when he sat on the table, he found a big bowl of pulao hmm, kept ready in front of him. He took that bowl and started eating it. Hmm, started eating it. By the time the grandfather and the grandmother came and the other members of the family, they arrived there. Hmm, and grandfather became really upset to see the activities of Toto. He had tried his level best to teach him the ways, good ways. He tried him to settle him down with other uh, animals who were there. But Toto was not like that. Hmm, he kept on eating. Grandmother cried. She started screaming out of anger. Hmm. And then the when Toto found that grandmother was getting angry, she was getting annoyed to make him more angry and annoyed just to tease her. What he did? He took the whole bowl of pulao, jumped down from the, the table, ran out of the window, and he climbed a big chair tree which was there near the house. He climbed and he sat in the branch, one branch of that tree with the bowl and he kept on eating that pulao for a long time and as soon as he finished, not a single grain was left in that bowl. He dropped that glass bowl from that uh, tree and it came down and it was broken into hundred pieces. It has been mentioned in the story. And that was the height of his mischief or naughtiness and his activities have now become from tolerable to intolerable. Grandfather, he was unable to tolerate now his mischief and naughtiness. It was beyond his tolerance. So that day, grandfather took a stern decision. He took a very uh, uh, serious decision to sack Toto out of his house, take him back and go and hand him over to the same fellow, the Tonga driver from whom he had bought him. This decision, final decision he took, Though I think with a very, uh, what you can say, with a very burdened heart, with heavy heart, because he loved animals very much. He had brought Toto just to try and he tried his best to train him. He, he taught him all the good ways, but Toto was such an animal, monkeys come in the category of the wild animals. They love to live in freedom in the jungles, in the forests. They are in the habit of running and climbing and jumping here and there. So it is not possible for all the animals to be domesticated, to be trained, to be to make them pet. Not possible for all the animals. There are certain categories of the animals which can be domesticated or pet, made pet. So grandfather, that day realized his that fault. And he took that decision to take Toto back to that Tonga driver and hand him over because he was not able to be, to remain in that house, to be in the company of other pet animals or with the family members. So he started now searching that Tonga driver. He searched, finally he searched him. He took the monkey, the Toto to him and he just sold him there to the Tonga driver again hmm, in three rupees. This time he had to face a loss of two rupees. But this was, that was acceptable to him. That was acceptable to him to go in loss. Why? Because he wanted to get rid of that animal monkey. Hmm, why? In the last, uh, if you will uh, look into the book, in the last paragraph, uh, you will find that it is written, it has been mentioned. Hmm. Obviously, Toto was not the sort of pet we could keep for long. 
was not that type of a pet who could be kept in the house, domesticated, tamed, and kept in the house for a long period of time. Even grandfather realized that. He realized that ultimately, though he was an animal lover. He had a great fascination and great love for animals. He was a kind-hearted man. And we were not well to do. And the second problem, the major problem was that, that the grandfather's family, they were not so well to do. They can and could not afford the frequent loss of the destructions which uh, the Toto used to create in the house, grandfather was not able to afford those things. Hmm? And afford the frequent loss of dishes, hmm? clothes, curtains, and wallpaper, and so many things. Hmm? So, grandfather found the Tonga driver, he searched for him, hmm? and sold Toto back to him, all for only three rupees. You remember the story in the beginning I told you that he bought it in how much? Five rupees. He had paid the fare of two rupees that time also. Now when he went to uh, just um, uh, sell him out, then at that time he again paid the Tonga driver only three rupees. And he had that loss to wear of three rupees. So in this way, finally, he got himself rid of that monkey who was not able to be in the company of human beings any longer. Hmm. Why was it so? Hmm. And my dear children, as I think, these things happen with not only with, uh, it is not only just for the animals. Hmm. In these th this thing happens with the with human beings also. Sometimes we find people around us who are not very disciplined, not obedient, not courteous. They are not sociably, they don't want to adjust with the society. They are not so, so peace loving. They create nonsense and nuisance all the time. So the people around them, they try to check them. They try to bring different kinds of changes in them. You know, we try our level best to teach them the ways of life. You know, we want little bit changes in their attitude towards others, in their nature, you know, in their behavior. But sometimes human beings also, they are so rigid and adamant that they don't want to change. It is said in English there is a proverb that old habits die hard and it is true also. But it's not bad that if we want to bring a change in ourselves, we can not do it. We can do it. We can bring a change. If some habits or something is bad in us, something which is which is not acceptable, acceptable by the people around us must, we should and we must try to change ourselves, to adapt ourselves hmm, in the in us in the surrounding, hmm, in the people with whom we live our life, must try hmm, to be comfortable for others, must try to learn things, hmm, to change our attitude towards others. Hmm, and this should be I, from uh, my point of view, this is also uh, uh, what you can say a lesson, hmm, or this is also a teaching which this the author uh, Rustin Bond wants to share with us. Toto was a monkey, was a wild animal. It's okay. Ultimately, it, it went to its that place which was not fit to him, fit for him. He was living there without food, was really looking very pale. He was there just tied with a throat and he was there out of the house in that rain, hail, storm and winter. With winter winds, he was there outside the house in a very bad and shabby condition. When he was brought to the house, he got all sorts of comforts, love and care from the grandfather as well as from the grandmother. 
but he did not accept that. He did not realize that. He did not try to change himself, to learn the new ways of life. He was unable to uh, just to um, be in the company of those animals, peace-loving, sociably, social good animals who were there already, already in the in the servant's quarter of that house, in the private zoo of that of the grandfather. He did not try to do that, change himself. So what happened? He was destined to go back to his that condition in which he was. And so he was sent back. When opportunities come in our life and we don't avail them, then this thing will happen. Another proverb is there in English that opportunity knocks but once. He got the opportunity, but he lost it. He did not utilize it. So whenever, my dear children, in our life, whenever we get such an opportunity, we should try to change ourselves. We must try to adjust ourselves in the new circumstances. We must try to learn good habits. We must try to inculcate better things, good habits and better things in our life. And on this note that the Toto was sent back, handed over back to that Tonga driver to get the same rough treatment, live there uncared, and that was his fate. So he met his fate again. All the mm, the pain which grandfather and grandmother took just to bring change in his behavior, just to bring him out of his all sorts of mischief and naughtiness, went in vain. And lastly, he was there back to the Tonga drivers to with the Tonga driver in the same condition, in the same situation. Now, on this note, the story ends. There are a few word me hard words and word meanings I have written on the board. And the first uh, meaning of uh, hard word is turnstile. Hmm. And this is a really new word for you, I think so. And its meaning is a mechanical gate consisting of revolving horizontal arms fixed to a vertical post, hmm, allowing one person at a time to pass through it must have seen this type of arrangement in malls and big, big shopping malls and marketplaces. So this is the meaning of turnstile. And there is another difficult word, which is halter. Halter means a rope or a strap. A rope or a strap placed around the head of a horse or other animals also, used for leading or teethering it. Few more words are here. I uh, have mentioned on the blackboard, and it is throw. What is throw? A narrow container, feeding container. Second, dryer. Very rough dryer. His hands, Toto's hands, look dryer. They were very rough. When grandfather saw him the first time, his hands will be very rough, mm, uncared, mm. and. The next word is fossil. Fossil means to tie or tied as it is in past tense, fossil. So tied, pleased, very happy. Next is grin. Grin means to look in anger. And next is quadruped. Quadruped is a four, is the, what is the meaning of this word quadruped? You must be knowing. Four foot animals are known as quadruped. And few more hard words are there. To go through the whole chapter, uh, note down the hard words, try to find them, use dictionary, make it a habit, my dear children, of using dictionary. If, if you will go to a dictionary, you will find so many synonyms also. You will find the origin of that word, actual meaning, usage also. And you will find uh, the synonyms also. You will find antonyms also if you will just go and try to find out. So try to consult a dictionary and try to learn more 
hard words and their meaning. So this is uh, uh, for today and we shall meet soon with a new live class or a video lecture and uh, all the best to you. God bless you. Thank you. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I don't think it is.